So the Mario series is a strange one. While having a reputation of having good games with shallow, sometimes repetitive, or basic stories, occasionally you get the random Mario game that has a much more fleshed out one. Such as the Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi games. Both RPG series and thus would naturally have a stronger focus on the story. In recent years, Mario and Luigi died, and Paper Mario stories have only just started becoming a little more broad after a couple of games made increasingly simplified. Games like Sticker Star having both gameplay and story gutted in an attempt to rebrand the Paper Mario games, which was likely due to the reception of Super Paper Mario, a Paper Mario game on the Wii with one of the darkest Mario stories to date. Ironically, if I recall right, and I'm sure I am, Super Paper Mario's mixed reception was not due to the story, and instead the changing of the gameplay, which tuned down most of the RPG elements and instead made it into more of a 2D side-scroller a la New Super Mario Bros. There's a lot to say about this admittedly complicated story, but I'll try to keep it brief and easily digestible. There's enough backstory and lore in this one game to fill a couple of videos, and frankly, I want to get to the topic at hand as fast as possible. So, this is Count Black. He's evil. Well, he wasn't always evil, but he had a tragic backstory and is now evil. He wants to destroy the universe and rebuild it anew, or so he says to his hapless group of lackeys. In reality, Black's plans are even more sinister than that, but let's put that aside for a moment. Now, Count Black has a book known as The Dark Prognosticus, which foretells most of the events that occur in Super Paper Mario. This book is basically the crux of most of his planning. There's also a book known as The Light Prognosticus, which I can only assume has fewer calories. The book tells him how to summon an evil item known as the Chaos Heart, an overly powerful object that will allow him to destroy all of the worlds. To create this item, a hideous monster must marry a fair maiden. So, Count Black kidnaps Princess Peach and Bowser and marries them, spawning the Chaos Heart and kicking off Mario, Peach, Bowser, and sometimes Luigi's quest to stop him by collecting the Pure Hearts, the heart-shaped good counterparts of the Chaos Heart. Basically, imagine the Chaos Emeralds, except they are based off of different kinds of love. Mario is also accompanied by a rainbow butterfly named Tippy, who knows more than she lets on about Black's past. It's not really important in this video, but in case I bring her up later, thar she goes. So, earlier you heard me mention Count Black's colorful cast of lackeys. See, evil or not, Black has a bleeding heart, and has taken in a slew of unfortunate souls with the promise of building a better world for them all. You've got the shape-shifting girly girl Mimi, who might be an ancient robotic spider, the big punch-first, ask-questions-later guy, O-Chunks, and the to-the-book office lady with obvious feelings for Black after he rescued her long ago, Nastasia. There is also a one Mr. L, who is quite obviously a brainwashed Luigi, and yet somehow Mario and his friends are too dense to figure it out. This is what I meant by sometimes Luigi. Early in the game, Nastasia brainwashes him, and he becomes a loyal follower of Count Black, the cool guy who doesn't take slack from no one. He'll come back later because somehow he is vitally important to the story. And finally, there is the subject of today's video, the one that seems to stand out amongst the misfits, except, you know, the guy who's obviously Luigi. And this character is a mercenary known as Dementio. And by mercenary, I mean a clown for hire. Dementio is a strange magical jester with a masked face that resembles those masks from those old Mario games that would chase you around whenever you grab the key and make life generally worse. Decked out in purple and gold, Dementio appears to be just another member of Black's mismatched band of goofs. He doesn't appear to be much of a threat as he is fought and defeated early on. His own teammates don't even seem to take him that seriously. If I recall right, Black, the Count of taking in all the lost sheep, actually turned Dementio down a few times before letting him crash on his couch. Dementio spends most of his time making far-reaching similes, cracking wise, and occasionally dipping into Mimi's journal, and seeming like a regular goofy clownish character. But that is only surface level. In reality, Dementio is something much more threatening than Count Black by far. Someone who can play the long game for ages and who can play both sides of the field against each other to get what he wants and very nearly succeeds in it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
Dementio's powers include invisibility, teleportation, including teleporting himself and others, the ability to create illusions of himself, up to nearly 100 clones, I'd guesstimate, the ability to create this dinky green pocket dimension known as Dimension D, the ability to shoot out little clusters of purple and yellow magic, the ability to create glass boxes, and spontaneously blowing people up. But we'll get more into these powers once we get into the story of the game. Dementio's questionable nationality is also worth bringing up. His design seems to resemble a Venetian jester. Venetian, Venice, Italy, Italian. This fits in with his use of the word chow when leaving conversations. Weirdly enough, in the Japanese version of Super Paper Mario, Dementio randomly throws in phrases like Comment allez-vous? which is French for how are you doing? Or apparently, ho are you doing? And it's showtime in English. So even in this vein, Dementio is an enigma. We don't even know if he has veins. Does Dementio bleed? Dementio's first appearance is while Count Black is discussing his plans amongst his minions. There's light banter in the such, but nothing to have Dementio stand out as something beyond this role. Dementio's first introduction to and encounter with the heroes is during Chapter 1 while Mario is walking across the frickin' desert. Mario ends up awakening the Guardian of the Pure Heart, Fractale, a robot dragon who kind of resembles dragons of old Paper Mario games, and recognizes Mario as being a big-time hero and plans to just let him by. That's when the Clown Menace himself shows up, makes a spectacle of himself, and zaps the dragon, causing it to malfunction and go on a rampage giving Mario no choice but to take it down, which he does. This might have been a slight bit of foreshadowing to what comes later, but the first real inkling of Dementio's secret nature comes after his second run-in with the heroes in Chapter 3. With Mimi and O-Chunks failing to get anything done, Black sends Dementio to fight them inside of a giant tree. Now, I always entered this tree as Mario, if I recalled right, but depending on the character, Dementio's got a slew of backhanded compliments. At last, the hero. I know of you from the festival of hair that dances upon your lip. Well met, lady. Your beauty is as refreshing as a slap to the face on a crisp winter day. You must be Bowser. I knew the moment I saw those flailing nubbins you call arms. There's no greater importance to this except maybe that this is one of the five or six times that Dementio brings up Mario and Luigi's mustaches. Dementio then pulls him into some kind of aura field, liminal space, backgrounds, pocket dimension that he has named Dimension D, great name, and that will make him incredibly stronger. Alas, it also makes his enemy stronger too, and he is quickly thwarted and hustles off in defeat. Except, no, he does not. Dementio is watching the heroes and he speculates that they are strong, but they will need to be stronger to defeat Count Black revealing to the audience that his loyalty to the Count might not be as it seems. In fact, Dementio's loyalty for Count Black goes only as far as to throw it up as a shield when needed. Does this mean Dementio's a good guy? Oh no, spoiler alert, but no. Dementio is much, much worse than Black, by which I mean he doesn't have a sob story to hide his questionable decisions behind. He also doesn't say it specifically, but going off his goals and behaviors later, we can only assume that Dementio threw this fight with Mario's group. That it was just an act. Anywho, moving on, Dementio reports his failure to Count Black and suggests Mario might be able to stop him in the prophecy, i.e. the book. Though he is actually doing this trying to wrangle information out of Count Black. It doesn't work, and he is dismissed, along with the others. However, he doesn't leave. He just turns invisible and continues to listen in on Count Black and Nastasia, and he catches on to some ominous implications revealed between them. Then he cryptically says that he has his own projects to deal with. It's uh, pretty obvious right here that Dementio is definitely a bad guy and that there may be more to Count Black than seems the eye, but I won't dwell on it since I just went into it. Dementio's next appearance is a chapter later when Nastasia is introducing Mr. L, the brainwashed Luigi, to the group. He promptly insults them, ironic since he just came in from being backslapped by Mario. This entire time, Dementio's dead silent. Once he's gone, Count Black reveals to the rest of them that there's this prophecy of a man in green, and since Mr. L is the only one wearing even vaguely green, it must be him. Count Black sends O-Chunks out next, and Dementio very unsubtly dips after him. 
Ochunks ambushes Mario in the middle of what might be yet another freaking desert, or close enough to it, when Dementio swooses his way in. Ochunks tells him to get, and Dementio reveals that he's just stopping in to say hey, and then he's off to see an acquaintance. Who this acquaintance is, is never actually confirmed, but it's likely this flower who's the villain of the chapter. But we do soon find out what he's getting. But he drops them into the green screen to battle. By time Dementio swings back through, Ochunks is begging Mario to kill him, so it's going about as well as you'd expect. Dementio requests that Ochunks indulge him with something, a little test for the Count. Ochunks agrees as his loyalty is to Black, and the two take off. Ochunks, quite literally, takes off. The matter of the test is left unknown until a little later when Mario and his crew walk up onto the two again. While traveling to this point, Mario and crew come amongst people with plants sticking out of their heads who become aggressive, almost zombified in a way. These people have been overtaken by Floro Sprouts. These little saplings, which are created by the villain of the chapter, which is this big flower, are planted in the head and take over the body of the host. Sort of like the delightful Ophiocordyceps fungus, which overtakes and puppeteers the bodies of insects. Yes, and this was before Last of Us made it so popular. Upon reaching Dementio, he non-subtly threatens them, offers to send them home, all while O-Chunk stands there silently, menacingly, until Dementio brings up his green filter, snaps his fingers, and boom, a sprout comes from O-Chunk's head. Dementio has effectively both lobotomized him and is puppeteering him. He commands him to attack and seemingly disappears. For some reason, assuming that an even dimmer bulb might shed more light, it does not, but I suppose the plan was just to test this, not to really think it would work. At least I hope it wasn't. In any case, Ochunks is a little harder to fight, but is quickly taken out. But when he is, he is also freed from the Sprout's control. And leaves, and then the heroes go on with what they're doing. Later on, the minions, sans Dementio, show up to meet with the Count, but he is absent, and Nastasia encourages them to stay put. As soon as she's gone, Dementio sidles in and plants the idea of a sneak attack against Mario. This is actually a ruse to get Mr. L alone, and after L fails to stop Mario yet again, Dementio puts him in a glass box and blows him the kingdom come. However, getting rid of Mr. L isn't the only plan here, as later on it is revealed that Dementio didn't just straight up end him, but sent him somewhere else, to the Underwear, the underworld of the Paper Mario world. And yes, I suppose that does sound like he's killing him, but apparently it isn't. Later, Mario and crew are trying to figure out their next step when Dementio casually invites himself into the conversation. Then he blows them up as well. For years, I thought Dementio was straight up killing Luigi and the gang, but I was just reading too much into it or not paying attention. Which makes sense, because if it was this easy for Dementio to kill someone, he would have probably just been doing that the whole time. In the underwear... In the underworld, Mario and Luigi meet back up. Luigi having been spared of his Mr. L brainwashing through this trip down here. Now, you might be wondering why Dementio did this, but a quick look back at his previous actions shows us why. It is to both get Mr. L out of the way, and to get him away from Count Black, and also to peddle Mario's little crew along to Count Black's castle, as he gleefully tells Count Black the next time we see him. Well, not that he did this on purpose, but that Mario's crew is on their way. Count Black, who's been doing largely nothing since kicking off the plot, is utterly shocked that Mario's not actually dead, even though he just literally went through hell. It is at this time that Dementio name-drops Count Black's real name, Lumiere. Count Black is shocked, but Dementio is not. He splits and disappears for a while, as Mario and co. finally break in the Black's castle to confront him. This giving away the fact that Dementio knows more about what's going on behind the scenes with Count Black than Black has made him privy to. It is not until Mario and Luigi are alone when Dementio starts to pop up and harass them, bombarding them with magic in a hall of mirrors, or a hall of shiny pitch black pictures, some of which are windows to another room, but still. A future room leads into a nightmare scene, a wave of Dementio clones, a sea of utter clownage. After this, Mario, Luigi, and Dementio finally confront each other face to face. And then Dementio makes them chase him all around for a while. And then they catch up yet again, and Dementio proposes a sort of team-up to defeat Count Black. 
He reveals that Count Black's plan the entire time was not to build a new world, but just destroy every world. Which is actually the truth. In reality, Count Black's mission was one to end anything and everything, and he was misleading all of his followers in the process. But Dementio's speaking in half-truths. He reveals that he's really been working on the sidelines to help the heroes, preparing them for battle, reuniting Mario and Luigi, freeing Luigi of his brainwashing and saving Princess Peach, and all under the guise of working for Count Black. He offers the two a hand, or two, a partnership to work together and stop the nefarious Count Black. I regret to inform you at this point that there's no teaming up with Dementio. I think it's kind of obvious at this point, from all we've seen, what Dementio really is. He's a master manipulator who plays his cards in the gray area so he can reach both sides, and then puppeteers them into his goals. He's out for only his own best interest. He may have a mutual goal against stopping Count Black, yes, but he's not on your side either. And if you join him, you won't be necessarily teaming up, as opposed to getting a different player to control your characters. By which I mean, if you choose to join Dementio here, and ignore Tippy's warnings to not trust him and Triple Down agree to join, he will possess Mario and Luigi with his devious little Floro seedlings and puppeteer them into his future plans, resulting in an immediate game over. No joke, this happens. Tippy just flies off and the world's doomed. The canonical route being that eventually Tippy convinces Mario that Dementio's lying, perhaps after he offers up a free sample of his own branded cologne as a bargaining chip, which should in and of itself be a red flag. Mario refuses. Dementio asks again. Mario refuses, and Dementio's so insulted, he announces his plans to beat up Luigi. Okay, so in this scene, he says Luigi is a pushover, and Luigi gets so fired up that he takes Dementio head-on while Mario runs off. But, apparently, this scene had to be censored in certain releases because of Dementio's use of the word shag. I think I'll start with the green one. The shag upon his lip will make a fine trophy. Shag? This mustache is all Luigi! Dementio does seem rather fixated on mustaches. Between that and him calling Mario a snack and actually saying the words hunky lifeguards, I think he might be compensating for something. Anyway, Luigi is able to jump on Dementio enough that he wins the fight. Dementio gives up, or does he? He then traps Luigi and himself in a tight box and blows them both up. And though he says it's game over for them both, we know this isn't quite the end of the road. Indeed, Mario continues on to fight Count Black. Halfway through said fight, when all hope seems lost, all of his friends and allies appear to help out. Including Luigi, who doesn't even know how he got there or what happened. Their friendship and the pure hearts of love and devotion are able to weaken Black and they beat him to a bloody pulp. Tippy, who is now revealed to be Count Black's long-lost love, tries to talk him onto the good side. But then, a misplaced pinwheel flies out of the darkness and towards the Black. Nastasia takes the blow. It is none other than Dementio who reveals himself and eagerly usurps Black's role as the villain by claiming the Chaos Heart for himself. Revealing that, as we expected, he has just been using the heroes to take down the Count so that he himself could seize the Heart. Not only that, he has also taken possession of Luigi using a Floro Sprout. Using a possessed Luigi and a Chaos Heart, Dementio creates this massive mech known as Super Dementio. You might be assuming that this is like a fusion of the Heart and Luigi, or the Heart, Luigi, and Dementio. I did, but it's actually shown that the characters are completely separate of it, so it's likely this is a Brobot, the robots that Mr. L used to attack Mario with, just upgraded and infused with the Chaos Heart. Now taking control of it, Dementio takes on the heroes and tries to get control of the world. Mario and his team takes them on, but they are too powerful. Unfortunately, Dementio didn't count on Black, Tippy, and the rest of the minions congregating in the green room. They send their power to Mario, yada yada, he clocks the robot and wins. Dementio questions how his plan could have failed, and everyone kind of is like, you can choose your own destiny, when... The crux of the game is that they are literally following the destiny to a T, and the only choosing factor was, for some reason, Luigi. They are ready to write Dementio off, but he is not finished. He assumedly dies, and his soul continues on a crusade to end the world. 
Dementia really is something that came out of a Kirby game. Demi dies here, but Count Black and Tippy seemingly sacrifice themselves to save the world by getting married with the Pure Hearts present. The game ends with the worlds recreated and saved, everyone going home, and even a picture of Black and his love, perhaps still alive somewhere. A happy ending. Except for Dementio, who is dead. Maybe? Because he's pulled this fake out death at least once, he might have just slipped out the back end of the brobot while throwing Luigi out the front. And now that I've spent at least seven pages talking about Super Paper Mario, the Dementio abridged version, let's go back to talking about Dementio himself again. All in all, Dementio is one of the most entertaining and effective villains of the Mario franchise. The way that the story constantly gives you avenues to think that he might be good, but then Dementio himself just ends up validating the suspicion that he isn't. And he's dripping with charisma. He feels like a good foil. In contrast to someone like Mario who barely emotes and doesn't speak, Dementio pretty much steals each scene he's in. Even when up against more eccentric characters like the other minions in Black, Dementio still stands out. So, there is a belief going around that Dementio is Mario's most evil villain, but admittedly, I don't know if that's the case. I think what he's doing is pretty evil. But consider this. Count Black was about to nix the entire universe because of his own grief. I get it, he was upset. But I cannot stress that brainwashing people, forcing people to get married, destroying worlds, and killing everyone is a really big deal. At least Dementio was on his way out the door when he decided to take everyone with him. And someone might say that the Dark Prognosticus itself might have influenced him, and there is a cutscene that suggests that might be the case. But there are moments when Count Bleck does show some clarity and is given an out. Such as when he's given an out by Nastasia when he finds out that his long-lost love might not be long-lost. But he's just resigned to his fate. It's not even a, I don't care about her anymore, I'm evil, I just want the death of everything. It's a, well, it's too late anyway. So he just kind of gives up. Not Dementio. The fool's dying and he's like, forget this, I ought to just take everybody with me while I can. It doesn't help that Tippy provokes him either. I'm not saying Dementio, magician, mastermind of madness, was going to decide not to lash out because somebody was nice to him, but you weren't helping things. You gotta stroke the ego of these kinds. They're pliable when they think they're winning. Though, admittedly, Dementio is definitely the kind of person who would see offered kindness and probably play along long enough to get himself back on his feet and then turn around and do something evil again. However, I would say that Dementio is the most threatening Mario villain, just because, unlike so many other bad guys who have these big schemes get taken out due to, well, like, usually either the inability to switch up plans or losing it to their emotions, he keeps a level head through most of the game, and he was capable of switching it up to adapt until he had, like, seven people in the power of God coming down upon him. You want to know something else? Something I think Dementio himself might find funny? So before Dementio's assumed death, Tippy tells him that his failure will be a footnote in the Dark Prognosticus. Basically, he will be forgotten, and only remembered for a lackluster and easily thwarted scheme. Yet, of all the characters in this game, save Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, obviously, Dementio is the one who I still see on a regular basis, in Discord and YouTube profiles, randomly mentioned online, grouped into lists of characters amongst Fawful and other fan favorites. A good cult of people still remember Super Paper Mario, but as time passes, those memories fade, or more specifically, we get further away from the hardware that houses the game and its switched-up gameplay and rep makes it less encouraging for new players to seek it out. It is slowly forgotten between more well-known Paper Mario games on both sides of the spectrum. Yet this jester is still making rounds on the internet! Instead of a footnote of failure, he's now a staple of long-lost Mario characters who stand out enough that they never truly die. That being said, I don't think Dementia will ever return. But I think if they ever needed a Mario movie villain who wasn't Bowser, or was maybe a worse-than-Bowser scenario forcing Mario and Bowser to team up, as they have in the games, Dementia would be a good option. And it's not like you'd have to get the whole Super Paper Mario story and lore back. Dementia's story, almost verbatim, is Jester slides into role as evil mastermind, no backstory required. It's just a possibility because 
I'd love to see him again. I think that the failure of Super Paper Mario was such a shame, maybe strictly because the characters who were in it have never returned again and probably have no chance of ever coming back, Dementio being one of them. I think there's plenty of Mario fans who'd like to see him again, and I think there's plenty of Mario fans who don't know that they would like to see him again, by which I mean fans of the new movie or fans who have just gotten into the series. I think a lot of people would really like Dementio and would really think he's a cool villain, but I don't think he'll ever get a chance. So maybe, maybe if people keep talking about him, maybe if he gets a little bit of a cult following, well he has a cult following, maybe if he gets a bigger cult growth, maybe we will someday see him again. In fact, get John Mulaney to voice him. It'll be a hit. I'm gonna bust you up, Plum Fum, and then I'm gonna wear your clothes! That was weird. One thing that will make me happy. Oh, well, what's that? All of the magic in the world. But for me, and no one else gets any. Is that so much? Yes! Agree to disagree. Pretty boss! 